Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about the normal delivery and the stages of labor. How do we define labor? Labor is the process by which a fetus and a placenta leave the uterus. This can be either by a vaginal delivery or by a cesarean section. Labor is also defined as the continuous progressive contractions that help to open the cervix by dilation and effacement and a passage of the fetus and placenta through the birth canal. What is a normal delivery? A normal delivery is the birth of one baby after a pregnancy of 270 to 290 days. The birth takes between 3 and 18 hours and the water breaks during the first stage of labor. The normal blood loss in a normal delivery is below 500 milliliters of blood. Everything else is considered an abnormal delivery and requires special attention of the gynecologist. How can we classify labor? Labor can be classified by different characteristics. One way to classify labor is by the duration of the birth. There is the partus precipitatus or precipitous labor, which is a delivery that is especially quick, to be exact, less than three hours from the onset of labor to the delivery of the baby. The opposite of that is protracted labor. It is also called labor dystochia or prolonged labor. This is when labor is progressing much slower than usually expected. It can occur in different phases of the delivery, about which we will talk more later. Then I will give you also the numbers by which we classify it as labor dystochia. Labor can also be classified by the location it takes place in. Labor can either occur in a hospital, at home, or spontaneously somewhere unplanned. Labor can also be classified by how far along the pregnancy it occurs. As labor on term between the 37th and 42nd week, preterm labor before that, or post term labor after that. We also have videos on preterm labor and post term labor, so you can see that if you're interested in that. We can also classify labor according to the vital status of the fetus. We differentiate between a live birth and a stillbirth. Now I would like to talk about the different stages of labor. There are three main stages of labor. In some textbooks, it is also defined as four stages of labor. Then the recovery after the delivery is classified as its own stage and as part of the labor. The first stage of labor is the stage of cervical dilation. The second stage of labor is the stage of the fetal expulsion, so when the baby is actually born. And the third stage of labor is the stage of the delivery of the placenta, also called afterbirth. And in some textbooks, the fourth stage of labor is the stage of the homeostatic stabilization and recovery of the mother. Let's now talk about the different stages a little bit more. The first stage of labor is characterized by uterine preparation, the loosening and expulsion of the mucus plug of the cervix, contractions of the uterus, and an increase of the intrauterine pressure with subsequent membrane rupture. The rupture of the membranes is also known as the water breaking. It happens when the amniotic sac bursts and the amniotic fluid leaks out. The amniotic fluid should be clear and odorless. If it is green in color and has a mull odor, it indicates that meconium, so the baby's first poop, is present in the amniotic fluid. That is an indicator for fetal distress. The first stage is also referred to as the cervical stage, as the cervix effaces and dilates. Effacement of the cervix is when the cervix becomes thinner. Another name for the first stage is the latent phase, as here the mother is usually not actively bearing down yet, 
and the uterus and cervix are getting ready for the delivery. The first stage starts with true labor contractions and ends when the cervix is fully dilated to 10 cm. This stage lasts an average 12 hours in women who give birth for the first time and 6 hours in women who gave birth vaginally before. In women who give birth for the first time, the cervix dilates around 1.2 cm per hour and in women who have given birth before, the cervix dilates a little bit faster, around 1.5 cm per hour. The first stage is considered to be dysfunctional, or it qualifies to be called labor dystochia, when the latent phase takes longer than 18 hours in nulliparous women, so women that have never given birth before, and longer than 10 hours in multiparous women. That's the most important characteristics for the first stage of labor. Let's now talk about the second stage of labor. This stage is also called active phase. It starts when the cervix is fully dilated to 10 cm and ends with the expulsion of the baby from the birth canal. The second stage of labor is subdivided into the propulsive phase and the expulsive phase. The propulsive phase is the first one within the second stage. It starts with the cervix being fully dilated and lasts until the presenting part of the fetus reaches the pelvic floor. The expulsive phase follows after the propulsive phase. This phase is characterized by the maternal bearing down efforts and lasts until the baby is delivered. This phase lasts usually around 2 hours in women who give birth for the first time and around 30 minutes in women who have given birth before. Important to remember for the second stage of labor is also that here the uterine contractions get stronger and more frequent. The true labor contractions usually last around 30 to 70 seconds and are around 5 to 10 minutes apart. With progression of the labor, the contractions become longer and are more closely spaced. How can we assist the mother during this stage of labor? We can offer warm compresses and stimulate the perineum to relax the skin and muscles. This prevents a rupture of the skin. In case the skin of the perineum thins out and becomes transparent, we should make an episiotomy. That is a cut through the perineum in either a midline or mediolateral position to prevent a spontaneous rupture. A spontaneous rupture can cause trauma to the rectum. We can also help the mother to find a comfortable position or help to change her position to one that is more favorable for birth. Gravity can help the expulsion of the baby, so a change in position from the lithotomy position is recommended. During the second stage of labor, the baby goes through the fetal cardinal movements. These movements happen so that the baby can pass through the birth canal. The baby basically adapts its diameter so that they optimally fit through the maternal pelvis. The pelvis has different measures at different levels. If you want to know more about that, you can see our video on pelvic measurements in the gynecology playlist. The seven cardinal movements are engagement, descent, flexion, internal rotation, then extension, external rotation and finally the expulsion. There are many different mnemonics available online. Feel free to choose the one that is the best suited for you. Important to remember is that the first three movements, so engagement, flexion and descent, usually occur together, so in the same time. The engagement of the head is said to begin when the biggest diameter of the head goes below the line to the pelvic inlet. It can already occur several weeks before birth or as late as during labor. If the baby is not able to engage, it can indicate a cephalopelvic disproportion, so basically that the baby's head is too big to be able to fit through the pelvis. 
Descent means that the baby is slowly going further down. This happens during the first and second stage of labor as the cervix dilates and the contractions of the uterus push the baby towards the pelvis. One way to classify the fetal descent is by the fetal station. The fetal station describes how far the baby's head has dropped into the pelvis. An imaginary line is drawn through the ischial spines. This point is station zero. Everything above the ischial spines gets a negative score and everything below it gets a positive score. The flexion describes how flexed the fetal head is. The fetal head should be flexed towards its chest to reduce the overall diameter of the head. The flexion is usually promoted by the resistance from the cervix, the uterus and the pelvic floor. As the baby descends further down, it will eventually go through the rest of the movements to accommodate its diameter to the diameters of the different pelvic levels. As the baby goes through the different cardinal movements, it is gradually born. In a cephalic presentation, the head is the first part that will be born. After the head is born, the baby rotates for the delivery of the anterior shoulder. After that, the posterior shoulder is born, and lastly the lower body and the umbilical cord. As the baby's head is the largest part of its body, labor should progress more easily after it. If you want to know more about the assisted delivery of a baby in breech presentation, you can watch our video on that in the gynecology playlist. Let's now talk about the third and last stage of labor. The third stage of labor begins when the baby is born. In this stage, the placenta and the fetal membranes are delivered. This stage takes around 15 minutes for both women who are giving birth for the first time and women who have given birth before. The placenta is around 20 cm in diameter, so around as big as a dessert plate. During the first stage of labor, the placenta is still fastly attached to the uterus. During the second stage of labor, there is a slight but progressive diminution of the attachment. After the birth of the baby, the uterus will have decreased a lot in size. It measures now around 20 cm vertically and around 10 cm anteroposteriorly. So the placenta occupies a large part of the area of the uterus. The upper segment of the uterus is thickened, while the lower segment of the uterus is thin and thrown into folds. The placenta can detach from the uterus in two different ways. The first possibility is that the margins of the placenta detach first. This is called a Matthews Duncan delivery of the placenta. The marginal parts are then unsupported and will promote the detachment of the more central parts of the placenta. The other possibility to deliver the placenta is called Schulze delivery. Here the placenta detaches first centrally and then progressively more peripherally. When the placenta, a highly vascularized structure, detaches, the blood vessels are being torn. This leads to bleeding and in case of the Schulze type of delivery of the placenta, blood will pool up between the placenta and the uterus. This promotes the detachment of the placenta. After the placenta is delivered, it should be checked that the surface is even and no parts are missing. If parts of the placenta remain within the uterus, it can, it can lead to infections and severe blood loss. If the delivery of the placenta did not occur 30 minutes after the delivery of the baby, it can be delivered manually. Here the doctor uses a gloved hand and introduces it into the uterus. The hand is basically used like a spoon to carefully, gently and slowly detach the placenta from the uterus. After the placenta is delivered, the retraction of the uterine muscles and the uterine contraction compress the torn vessels to minimize blood loss. Also thrombosis occurs due to the stage of hypercoagulability that occurred during pregnancy. 
After the delivery of the placenta, the delivery is completed and the patient begins the puerperium. If you want to know more about the puerperium, you can see our video on that in the gynecology playlist. That's it for this video. It was rather long but hopefully helpful. If you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.